for any high-risk woman who is going through pregnancies, health workers need to know that their patient could have rheumatic heart disease. And that rheumatic heart disease may be silent. So it's very important when you're encountering high-risk individuals is to think of rheumatic heart disease and to screen for rheumatic heart disease by listening to the individual's heart and if there is a cardiac murmur to request a prompt echocardiogram. And this will really help you to plan the journey of pregnancy and to come up with the best place to deliver the baby. The highest risk women in Australia are the indigenous people, Maori, Pacific Islanders and refugees. One of the big issues is that it might not be diagnosed. So a young woman, for example, might become pregnant and no one actually knows that she has underlying rheumatic heart disease. And her, um, the symptoms related to that might become increasingly severe through pregnancy. And um, one of the problems is that people might live a long way away from a major centre, hundreds of kilometres away in some cases. They, there might be all sorts of barriers, like a language barrier, they might not have very good English, they might be very shy, um, they might not be used to travelling to a major city or a major centre. There are all sorts of reasons why it might be difficult to deliver the sorts of medical care to that pregnant woman that she actually needs. And uh, we do see that there are sad cases where people fall through the gaps, uh, even with all best intentions. So undiagnosed rheumatic heart disease is very risky. If we know that someone has rheumatic, rheumatic heart disease, then we can plan for the delivery. We can ensure that mothers deliver in a safe place where there's intensive care available. Pregnancy poses a further strain on the heart. So we know that in a, a normal pregnancy, the cardiac output increases by 50%. And the reason for that is that the mother's heart really needs to pump for both the baby and for the mother. And the heart rate increases by 10 to 15 beats per minute. So it's what we call a hyperdynamic state, a bit as similar to if you had a fever. So the heart has to work extra hard to pump blood around the body to deliver the, the demands that the body needs in the pregnant state. Now most pregnant women are able to do this. They're able to increase their cardiac output with by 30 to 50 percent without any problems. However, if you're starting with a sick heart, that's actually a big task. With patients with severe rheumatic heart disease, their hearts are already struggling and that extra 30 or 40, 50 percent may not be possible and it may lead to heart failure, death of the mother and of the baby. I thought at first, as I was going through my pregnancy, I thought that I was going to have problems delivering my son. I was scared at first and then the doctor said to me, I think you should, shouldn't be scared. Individuals who have severe rheumatic heart disease or have mechanical valves, it's critical to consult your doctor when you're planning to fall pregnant, so before conception. This way, the patient and the doctor and the health workers can have a relationship to decide on the best management pathway. A pregnant woman with rheumatic heart disease ideally should see a cardiologist before 20 weeks and have an ultrasound of her heart and have a full assessment and be followed carefully through the pregnancy to see if that heart with the damaged valves can actually cope with that extra strain of pregnancy. When I went to Darwin, yeah, I was pregnant. Um, there was a month before I had my son, so I went in to have him. They'd in there for a month earlier to ready for my to have my son. During pregnancy, the three to four weekly prophylactic penicillin, or the penicillin we give to prevent streptococcal infection, has to be given regularly every three to four weeks throughout the pregnancy. Penicillin is a safe medication to give in pregnancy, so um, it won't harm the baby. I did the right thing by looking after myself my health and coming to the clinic, getting my LA Bicillin every month, doing my exercises, drinking water every day, make sure that I don't get any bacteria, any infections. Clinicians who've been here for a long time, that's our greatest resource and we have to tap into that and uh, develop as 
as effective educational programs as we can for all the newcomers. It's really important that at a time of pregnancy and especially immediately after delivery to provide further education about contraception, about family planning and to make sure that the next pregnancy will be just as safe as this one. Health staff have to be aware that it's something that, that they have to treat and uh, we have um, medical guidelines which we follow. The definitive text Australia-wide is the Australian Guideline for Prevention, Diagnosis and Management of Acute Rheumatic Fever and Rheumatic Heart Disease. Most patients with rheumatic heart disease, they can have a safe, straightforward pregnancy and can deliver in their own communities. Those individuals with mild or moderate rheumatic heart disease, if they stay on track with their treatment and receive their penicillin injection on time, they can really look forward to an uncomplicated pregnancy with a healthy newborn.